G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, this market is a crazy old thing because I really can't pick what's going to happen. I thought the altcoins were going to bleed off, Bitcoin was going to pump, then kind of everything dumped except for Bitcoin. Now everything's kind of coming back again, including Bitcoin. This really is a crazy cycle that is just so hard to pick. I mean, Bitcoin, we're nearly getting towards 52,000. You know, Ethereum back at 1,800, and look, there's just a, a fair amount of green here. Not the crazy kind of greens that we've been used to generally, but look, they definitely are there. I mean, the market cap, now we're nearly at $1.6 trillion. We are getting very close. BTC dominance has risen, of course, because Bitcoin's going on a bit of a run. I think this could uh, continue to grow a little bit. And again, I still think it's possible we see the alts start to bleed off if Bitcoin goes on a run. But... Look, we'll just have to wait and see. It's really hard to know. Ethereum dominance has dropped. It was up around sort of 14%. Uh, so down to 13%. But look, it's also been a lot lower before. Gas prices have come down a little bit. Not a whole lot though. So yeah, it, it's... And I mean, you can just look at this kind of stuff. There is a lot of kind of choppy sideways action. Yes, things are kind of going up a little bit. Again, you know... Started down here, finished off here, it was higher, it was lower. Started down here, finished here, started here, finished here. Uh, and you can see most of those charts are like this. So it really is just some topsy-turvy, choppy action at the moment. And it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I can't tell whether there's going to be a big retracement from here or whether there's just going to be you know further pumping of coins. I'm, I'm conflicted and... and and I'll let everyone know. I just I don't know what's going to happen at the moment. Usually there's some indicators that give me some kind of gut feeling. And I don't like to use gut feeling. But that's generally what it is. Just some, some instincts sort of kick in. And I go, all right, I think this is what's going to happen. Uh, and I have definitely been wrong a few times. So at the moment, I'm not investing any money because I just don't know what's going to happen. I've got cash on the side for if there is a big retracement. And look, if I've been wrong and they all just continue to pump, well, then I'll just sell more when I feel like, you know, the price is right to sell some more. And I won't have lost any money, just that unrealized gains. But again, unrealized gains are that. They are never a true gain until you actually hit the sell button. And I've made profits on most of the things that I've been involved in. I have sold some for small losses and I've sold others at a very small profit because they just were being outperformed by better projects. But yeah, overall... I'm pretty happy with how I've done, but I just can't pick what the market's about to do at the moment. Yeah, strange times, strange times. All right, what's really pumped in the 24 hours though? Top 100. All right, Pancake Swap's done pretty good. Horizon Energy Web, Venus. Now look, there's a couple of, there's really one good double digit pump, and then a couple of okay double digit pumps, and then we're really just into single digit pumps. Now again, no one's complaining about going up five, six, seven percent in twenty-four hours, but for crypto, that's you know, pretty kind of minor in a bull run, and we are in a bull run still. You know, we haven't broken that bull run yet, and you know, hopefully we've got a lot longer to go. But at the moment, it really has just kind of stalled, and we'll, you know, unless you know something that I don't know, and if you know something that I don't know, write it in the comments down below, let me know. But I think we're all just waiting to see what the markets are going to do. I don't think there's too much money coming into the altcoin space at the moment. There's definitely been a little bit of money come into Bitcoin to push it up, but no sort of drastic big moves. But Bitcoin's done this before. So we will go have a look at the chart very shortly, and I'm going to show you something. So what about big losses first though? No real big losses. Again, Ample Fourth, okay, they've gone down 12%. They went up 150%. So no one's complaining about that. Same thing, Algorand, 8% pullback. They went up 30%. No one's complaining. And then again, some of these, they're just fairly small losses anyway. I mean, Elrond has really been retracing. So, you know, that's to be expected when something pumps so hard. And again, the same thing could continue to ha happen to Amp. Uh, and you know, look, Doge, again, a perfect example. So I do think people are starting to take out some of those profits and they're probably getting ready to get back into, you know, either they just want to have cash on the side or they're getting into Bitcoin, hence why Bitcoin's pushing up. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, let's go over to the chart and we'll have a look. So here we are at the moment. Again, I drew this line days ago and it seems to be holding at the moment. 
but Bitcoin really is kind of just sort of ranging. Yeah, we're going up ever so slowly, but nothing too massive except for this. So it's really hard to know, yeah, what's going to happen from here. But we are still in an uptrend. There's no doubt about that. And I mean, you know, you can just have a look at this chart. We've been in an uptrend for very long. We did a lot of sideways here, and all of us can remember that last year. Uh, it did hang around for quite some time. We had the Bart Simpson, and then again, it's not always going up crazy. There is times where we sort of travel sideways uh, and pull back a little bit, and that's all part of a healthy market. It can't just continually, particularly like this. This can't be sustained, and that's why we had one of the heaviest retracements that we've had, because this was just almost parabolic, and then it had a fairly hefty dump as well. So again, this, you know, if it kind of just keeps ranging up and pulling back a little bit and ranging up and then pulling back a little bit, that's that's a healthy market right there. It means there's not over exuberance. And even if we have small pullbacks, you know, things like this and that and this, not so bad. But when we have these big moves like this and even sort of really like this, then of course you're going to have some retracement. It's just what happens in the market. All right, a couple of interesting stories though. So over 100 million in crypto collectibles or NFTs sold in the last 30 days. That is a lot of NFTs. I mean, people have just paid through the nose. We go down here and have a look, and what I found interesting is crypto kitties are back. People are buying these things. They're up 305%. Here's all the buyers, and that's the change in the prices. So, yeah, Crypto Kitties coming back from 2017, never say die. I mean, you can see NBA Top Shot, you know, that's just gone absolutely crazy. Uh, crypto Punks, Cypher Punks, all the same kind of thing. Art Blocks, Axe Infinity doing quite well, but Art Blocks really doing well. So, a couple of really big movers. I'm not into the NFT space uh, too much myself. Uh, it's something I just I need to do more work on. I don't want to just go out and buy random stuff that's not going to do anything for me. And, you know, art is not exactly my specialty or forte. So, yeah, I, I want to do some more research into things before I go out and really think about buying NFTs. Because, again, it's just not my thing. I don't know enough about it. What I would do is invest in where they're generally being made. So Ethereum. So I like Ethereum. I know what I like to think is a reasonable amount of Ethereum. So hence why I would buy Ethereum. But look, Wax is doing it right there. And the F, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Fulcrum or something. I don't know. I'd have to have a look. But there has been a bit of talk about the NBA Top Shot NFTs and things like that. So a lot of money being put into NFTs. And look, it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure some of these are going to pay off a hundredfold. They're going to be worth an absolute mint in the future. But I just think probably 90% of them will actually lose value. They won't be worth anything. Anything. So again, that's why I'm not buying. I just don't know enough about art in general, let alone crypto art. Coinbase. All right, they've finally got to, got to the party. They're a little bit late, but they're getting into ETH 2.0 staking. And I actually have a waiting list because they've got so many people that want to do it. So that is, again, bullish for Ethereum. You know, they don't have enough room to let, you know, people simply just walk in there's obviously a bit of a lineup going so that is bullish for ethereum and it is good to see that they're finally getting uh into the staking party as well uh, i need to hurry up and get that done i do have uh, enough ethereum to stake i just yeah i don't even know why i haven't got around to it i was too busy buying altcoins and now that that's all kind of eased off maybe i need to hurry up and go and buy the avado and get some eth 2.0 staking happening i don't want to put all my eth into it but I have enough to at least run one node, uh, and then we'll have to wait and see whether I'd, you know, consider trying to go for a second node or just, you know, have what ETH I have left to kind of sell, I guess, as it continues to go higher. All right, a second Bitcoin ETF. So, excuse me, in Canada, one got, oh God, I'm full of gas here at the moment. One got granted the other day, and it seems like a second one. So Canadian regulators have approved a Bitcoin ETF application filed by Evolve Funds Group. The fund, dubbed EBIT, will offer institutional investors an alternative way to access Bitcoin. This is already a second Bitcoin ETF approved in Canada. And I know uh, there's an Australian one that's being looked at, and I did talk about that the other day, so maybe we might have one as well. 
The cryptocurrency market becomes more integrated with traditional finance markets by the day. Evolve has developed a true first, giving investors an easy to understand product that's available through their existing brokers and advisors that gives ownership of Bitcoin. And this is probably the best way for people who know nothing about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin other than, you know, maybe they've heard a few little tidbits here and there, but they want to get involved. ETF, I would 100% say is the best way for, yeah, people who just don't understand crypto. We need to be careful that, you know, new people coming in don't just sort of rush in, buy Bitcoin and then lose it all because they've sent it to the wrong wallet and all the rest of it. ETFs is just a much easier way for, for the true beginners who really don't know anything and haven't got any background in it and are really just here for some, I guess, money gains. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. We're all here for the gains. But again, we don't want to have too many people burnt because it'll slow the growth down. So I like the idea of these ETFs. All right, Dubai government. A government-owned entity in Dubai has started accepting Bitcoin, Ether and Tether as payment for its services, according to local media reports. So adoption, it just continues to happen. You know, there's governments that are looking at getting into it. Well, local shires, you know, like Miami and things like that. Uh, now there's governments that are getting into it. It really is just the start of something big. Now it may not get as big and as quick as what a lot of people are thinking. So stock to flow model and things like that. Predict $288 sort of thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of this year. I hope he's right. I, I, I really do. But it just might not happen. We need to keep that in the back of our mind. Maybe this kind of has a bit of a slower burn. Maybe we get up to sort of 70, big retracement, come back down to sort of 40, maybe even 30,000, you know, have a 50% sort of correction. And then it just takes a while for us to build back up. No one really knows. And, you know, be careful of anyone who says they know exactly what's going to happen because that is an absolute lie. If they knew exactly what was going to happen, they wouldn't be telling everyone else they would <laughs> or they would be setting you up for failure. So again, just be careful when people say that. No one truly knows exactly what's about to happen. Don't get me wrong, everyone's got their opinion. Opinions, everyone's got one, but that's all it is. It's an opinion. They can't say it's based on facts. It's just based on something that's happened previously. No one I know can tell the future. That is so far anyway. Maybe maybe I haven't met all the fortune tellers and future uh, you know, people who can read palms and all the rest of it. Maybe they're out there. All right, last but not least. So... Blockchain firm asks Nevada State for permission to build a crypto smart city in Story Country. That is interesting, and we'll go and read some of their story because it's got some interesting points, I think. So according to a report published by Associated Press, Blockchain's LLC wants to build the crypto city within its 67,000 acres of land located in Reno's east, but the application is not limited to Blockchain's LLC. The firm CEO, Jeffrey Burns, wants that, uh, wants that local authorities grant other companies the green light to do uh, similar projects in the state. Per the company CEO, if they get approval, the firm will establish its own laws as they'll be granted power on building schools and even law enforcement. So it could be, you know, the way things are going to be in the future. That's what it really is sounding like at the moment, that this is what could be if we go down this path and i'm sure you know eventually some of it will cross over to what just simply will be the crypto city also expects to deploy an economy based on digital currencies where residents could purchase goods and pay for services via crypto assets this that is the future anyway i, I, I truly believe that i think the you know cash is going to die we're still going to have a digital form of fiat which still has its issues but cash itself i don't think we'll have too much in the future i think that really is you know on its way out and everything's going to be digital everything's going that way anyway however they don't want to limit the project to economies digitalization in fact the smart city aims to record financial statements medical records and personal data on the blockchain i think we need to be careful with the personal data stuff as long as it's protected properly but you know I do agree with it in sort of principle. The city will be located 12 miles east of Reno. The proposal also aims to build 1,000, well, sorry, 15,000 homes starting from 2022. So that's not too far away at all if the firm gets the approval. I like the idea of this. This is, you know, forward thinking. This is people planning for the future. And again, it's not just about, oh, we're going to build a city that's 
going to use cryptocurrencies. They're really thinking about the whole digital space in general and trying something new. Again, links against you know establishing their own schools uh, and law enforcement. Maybe they come up with a new model that you know will improve law enforcement. Not that I have any major issues with law enforcement, but some of the stuff we've been doing for such a long time and it's just not making a difference. So it's that old kind of saying, you know. There's only so long you can keep banging your head against a wall before you're either going to knock yourself out or you're going to have to try something else. You can't just keep going down the same path, doing the same thing over and over again, thinking that there's going to be a different result. So I don't know if that's going to be the answer, but I do like the fact that people are thinking about things like this and they are trying to plan for the future. You know, we're going to have to experiment. We're going to have to try some things. And law enforcement's only one small part of it. Again, it's the money, schooling. We need to, you know, change the way we teach kids these days. I remember someone saying something that, uh, it was on a YouTube clip and someone said, you know, the way we used to learn was we had to be able to repeat everything or write everything down. With the internet, we don't need to anymore. It's all already there. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that means we shouldn't learn anything or have, ever have to retain any information. But really, almost any information we want is a tap of the iPad or a tap of the phone away these days. And that is not going to change. We're not going to go back to the old ways. Uh, again, unless there's some catastrophic thing that happens to the entire planet, you know, all the satellites and everything go down, then yes, maybe we have to go back to the old way. But outside of that happening, I think we do have to move away from the old style of you know how schools are run, the way we teach, uh, and things like that. I don't believe kids need to be able to just remember everything they're, they're ever taught for the rest of their lives. We will naturally remember things anyway, but I do think, yeah, it'll be more about you know how to find it and things like that. Anyway, that's a little bit off topic because uh, this is a cryptocurrency channel generally. But yeah, I do like the idea of this. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you like the idea of this city? And do we, you know, do we really need to start, you know, testing new theories on all things, not just cryptocurrencies? Again, building schools, maybe law enforcement, you know, how we store data, medical records and things like that on the blockchain. I really like the idea of this. I like when people are thinking long term, not just next week or, you know, I use the, you know, like politicians, they're generally only in for maybe four years or eight years or something like that. Everything they do is so short-sighted generally. They're only thinking about how it's going to help them get re-elected in the next election, not how it's going to help people in, you know, 20, 30, 40 years' time. So this I really like. All right, it's pretty late here in Australia, so I won't take up any more of your time. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. Things are looking pretty good at the moment, and I'll see you next time.